Hey guys, Alex Rally. Today we have an awesome conversation that I'd love to have with you guys, an idea that I've been pondering for a while, and it's this idea that the pyramid structure that we're taught about work and business is a lie. And we're taught in society that there's this pyramid structure of a, of a company, and we start at the bottom, and our goal, whether this is you know consciously told to us or, or, or subconsciously we're aware that our goal is to move our way up through the ranks of this pyramid and eventually reach the top where we could be the highest position in a company. Or if that's not possible, at the earliest opportunity when we've saved enough money or we have the experience or we get the idea that we're going to leave this company in pursuit of our own so that we could jump to the top of the pyramid. And then we could have people below us and create our own pyramid so that we could be the boss, right? That's, the, that's what we're told the American dream is. And that's a lie. That's not the American dream. The American dream is that anyone can be whoever they want to be. And they could be whoever they're meant to be. But it should be obvious that not everyone is meant to be the founder of a company. That's just so obvious. In fact, the percentage of people that are, are truly meant to be founders of companies is probably something like one in a hundred. If you think about companies that have thousands of employees, there's one founder or a couple owners, then it's obvious that the relationship between founder and employee is one to a hundred or one to a thousand. So that, that obvious truth should give us an awareness that the chance that any one of, one of us is that, is that role is about one in a hundred. But the problem is the stigma that's associated with the words that I'm saying right now because we're taught that there's a, a superiority to being the founder. And that's just not true. And, and, and that's bullshit. And this, this teaching that, that society tells us is the cause of what I believe is deep pain amongst a lot of people in, in the workplace who aren't fulfilled or who are buy, buy into the lie that they, they have to move their way up through the ladder to achieve a position when in fact they might be better off in a different position. And the way I'd like to illustrate this is not through the pyramid analogy that we just talked about that you just saw, but through the puzzle analogy. And the puzzle analogy is right, I believe, because it is flat. And it's structured in a way, everyone's done a puzzle when they were a kid, and it's easy to imagine that while every piece of the puzzle is absolutely integral to creating the picture, no one piece is more important than any other piece. And in fact, one piece is only good if it's placed in the correct place. And this is why a puzzle is important as an analogy. So if you think about the pieces of a puzzle as a toolkit, let's imagine that we are, we're taking out a, a puzzle and it looks like a, a, a toolbox. And our goal is to put the pieces of the puzzle together so that we create the hammer, we create the nails, we create the screwdriver, we create the wrench, the drill, and the scissors. And all of these things are essential to creating a toolbox. The reason I love this analogy of a puzzle so much is because it puts into perspective the truth that the CEO isn't more important than the assistant. They're just different puzzle pieces. And yes, the CEO has to come first. Yes, the CEO has more work. Yes, the CEO gets paid more. But that doesn't mean that the puzzle is complete without the edges as any more than it's complete without the center. Right? And you could, yes, you can see the picture of the puzzle when you have the first 15 pieces in the circle start to take shape and this, they, those pieces, you know, put themselves down first. They take more risk. It's understandable that they get paid more and compensated more. But that doesn't make the puzzle complete without all of the pieces in place. It's also extremely useful of an analogy because it helps us realize with the tool shed that the toolkit that a hammer, like I'm a hammer. Let's say I'm a hammer. I'm Alex Riley. I'm a hammer. If I need to put a nail in the wall, I'm the best. I am fucking amazing because I could just like whack it and it goes straight into the wall. You could put a nail in the wall with a drill, maybe. You could put a nail in the wall with a screwdriver if you use the back and beat it like this. You could put the nail in the wall with scissors if you tie and beat the back, but it might just fall off. So different tools can do the same function, but it's really important to be 
aware of what tool we are first and foremost. And there's so much pain caused in the workplace because we're told that we need to all be the drill. The drill is the CEO, everyone needs to be a drill. I mean, imagine how ridiculous this sounds right now that I'm saying this because when you put it into this perspective, it sounds stupid. I don't need to be a drill, I'm a fucking hammer. I'm, a, I'm fine, people need me. I'm mean, really important. I can't, I can't, I, I can't cut stuff. I don't know how to do that. I'm just a hammer, dude. I'm a great hammer, but if you need scissors, you're out of luck. You need the other pieces of the puzzle. But I am aware of what piece I am. It's important that everyone is aware of what piece they are because it's through the lack of awareness that we're trying to be pieces that we aren't and that's where great pain is caused because we're trying to do a task that we suck at because we're, we're told that we're supposed to or that our parents pressure us or our girlfriend tells us or our boyfriend tells us or whatever it is and we feel this pressure in society that we all have to be the drill, the famous drill and pain is caused. So first start by being aware of what piece we are, that's super important. And the second is to understand what pieces are also missing and, and to work for an organization where all the pieces are in the right place. And that starts with the leaders of the organization being aware of what pieces they are and placing the other people in the organization in the right places. So it's not enough to have a toolkit with a hammer, a screwdriver, a nail, a wrench, and uh, whatever, a drill, if the drill is trying to do what the scissors are doing, and the hammer is trying to do what the drill is doing, and the screwdriver is trying to do what the wrench should be doing. You, yeah, yes, you have a toolkit, and you have a beautiful organization with a ton of talent, but everyone's trying to do something they aren't, and the system fails. So this is the perspective I would like I wish people had and I wish we were taught this way and I would love if people used the puzzle analogy because I just believe that it's 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 more f right it's just fair to look at the the system that way and I feel like it removes this pressure and also this arrogance of the, of the leaders that are at the top that think that they're somehow better than the people who are at the bottom so the pyramid creates arrogance the puzzle creates harmony and that's the way great organizations, I believe, should be ran. I hope you took something for this video. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what piece you are and if you like this idea or not. If you do like this, you think someone would benefit, please share it with them. That would be ultimately the highest compliment you could give. Thank you so much for your time. I know your attention could be anywhere. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.